our energy system is dominated by coal, oil, gas, and all of those are pumping CO2 and other, other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and have been doing since the Industrial Revolution. Carbon dioxide emissions are one of the key factors that lead to global warming. So carbon dioxide contributes to the greenhouse effect, which is the warming of our planet within our atmosphere. We're all deeply concerned about climate change and its effects on generations to come. We are thinking every day about what that future is going to look like. We have to be thinking about low carbon. We have to be thinking about climate change as, as in, in the midst of that design process. We can't just make a, a quick switch to renewable energy. We've seen over recent years the cost of solar PV has come down dramatically. Wind power is scaling up to provide bigger and bigger turbines. And battery technology as well has been a significant enabler of the electric vehicle transition, but also providing storage uh, solutions that help, uh, that help bring on that variable renewable in, into the electricity grid. We've been collaborating with Cambridge University and ETH University in Zurich to develop um, a linear optimization approach to um, energy master planning and meeting energy demand. I'm not a mathematician or a computer scientist, but I've come across linear optimization really in the last year or so. We've been trying to answer questions for a long time along the lines of how do I get the least cost, lowest carbon energy system for a development or for a city? And linear optimization gives us a, a kind of computing power to not just find a solution that works or works okay, but actually find the best solution available. The model essentially runs through as many scenarios as you want to analyse on renewable energy solutions and different building demands and chooses the optimal solution, minimising either cost or carbon. And by assigning a monetary cost to carbon, you can optimise for financial and carbon aspects. We wanted to make the final scenario output zero net carbon every hour which is almost an impossible task. Um, so we ended up sizing a wind farm that would be so large that it was just completely impractical um, and you'd need a thermal store to harness all of that energy. There is research being done into technology that could make that more possible. I think that could be something we achieve in the future. About 80% of homes within the UK have gas as their main source of heating. And when we burn natural gas or methane, it releases heat, water and a large amount of carbon dioxide. And it's getting rid of that carbon dioxide that, that we need to work on. Um, the advantages with hydrogen is when you burn hydrogen, all you get is the heat and the water and none of the carbon dioxide byproduct. The High for Heat project is the Hydrogen for Heating innovation programme that is running to establish whether it's possible and safe to use hydrogen in our homes and buildings. Hydrogen is a gas, like natural gas and methane. They're different types of gases, so we need to make sure that our existing infrastructure and networks and pipes in the ground and our appliances are suitable um, to be used with hydrogen. The High for Heat programme is running a series of different competitions. One of the key competitions we're running is to develop new hydrogen appliances, hydrogen boilers, cookers and gas fires. One of the key challenges for manufacturers is to make sure they are a like-for-like -like replacement of existing boilers, cookers and gas fires. Arabs are committed to helping find solutions to low carbon future. Hydrogen could be one of the pathways that can support that transition, but also hydrogen is great because it can be used as a natural battery. For example, when we've got excess um, renewable energy, we could be capturing that and converting that into hydrogen, storing the hydrogen and then using the hydrogen for times when we need it. Whatever we do to decarbonise our energy system, there aren't any simple solutions. Moving away from methane as our main source of heating is going to be really complicated. And at the moment what we're doing is collecting the evidence to help the government work out what's the best way. One route would be via electrification, and the other route is via putting hydrogen into the gas network. And, and at the moment we just don't know what the right answer is. 
Our research agenda at Arup uh, is, is really built around um, supporting the projects that, that we're uh, working on with clients, but it, but it gives us the opportunity to um, look at a set of individual projects and, and think about uh, how we can design better solutions. We can use research to build better tools that allow us to do that faster, addressing more complexity in our analysis. And the research also allows us to build into our advice the best possible knowledge of, 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 what, of what's working uh, in, in different locations.